Good morning, Wadarapa. This is Anna Cardno from Wadarapa DHB with the show that comes to you every fortnight on Arrow FM, Wraparound Wadarapa, where we bring to you the support services that are available uh, and all the different roles and responsibilities and things that are available to you to help us live well in this region. And today I am very lucky to have with me Sergeant Jill Flower from uh, our New Zealand Police team and with her, many of you will know as Chopper, we have Nathan Rewai Couch, who is our uh, family safety harm advocate and uh, Jill and Nathan are with us today to be talking about how we can keep ourselves safe, have a general conversation around Wadarapa community and how we can support each other as best we can, particularly coming into this Christmas period. Nice to have you with us Jill. Morena. So what what is it do you think that people should be keeping top of mind right now when it comes to um, when it comes to keeping themselves safe, to, to thinking about how they can have the best possible time with the least possible stress at Christmas time. And if things do go wrong, what do we encourage people to do? I think be, mostly uh, is to be realistic about the upcoming Christmas period. You know, don't overspend, uh, do everything within limits uh, because it's the stresses of um, lack of money, uh, the stress of not being able to buy things uh, for your family and things like that that start to amp up uh, st- the, the dynamics within the family. So just keep it simple and have fun and do the do what you want to do with your family because family time is the most important thing. It's not about what you provide, uh, you know, with presents and things like that. Just yeah, just keep it within your your means and, and enjoy it. Enjoy the time. There's that um, fabulous quote, and I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it talks about how you can't take your things with you. You know, when we go at the end of our life, we can't take the things. It's the memories that are really important, isn't it? And I think that's something that in this ridiculous world of consumerism and advertising and crazy, chaotic TV ads and expectations that we build for kids that makes it so difficult for parents, especially parents that haven't got a lot of resource to put in behind it to meet those expectations. So I guess that's part of it really, isn't it? We all have a responsibility just to to help our children and our families keep things real and keep our expectations you know realistic absolutely and yeah. there's lots of help out there so like the food bank Lynn Tankersley is amazing um, if you if you don't have enough food for Christmas or things that you need just go and ask there's mm-hmm. so many people out there to to help you and at the end of the day if if you need help um, just you yeah, just find someone even even us at the family safety team come and see us so you guys have been really involved in, uh, in the food drive haven't you recently there's been you know there's been the food drives with the police the ambulance and everything being involved in that and and that's all around providing for christmas isn't it that's, that's right that's yeah. around so that's building up the stocks that were required to yeah. help people all the way through to january yeah uh, which is the tough time and there is a wonderful uh, community Christmas lunch that's put on as well, isn't it? That people can. Um, so I guess that's a Lynn Tankersley thing too, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is, yeah. 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 What about you, Nathan? What are your pearls that you have in terms of how to how people can behave and, and sort of have a happier time at Christmas? What do you normally see at this time of the year? What are the, what are some of the things in terms of your family safety work that you that you see negative, positive, or or otherwise? Uh, Anna. Um, thanks for having us in um, and just listening to uh, Jill um, talking there and you also mentioning the consumer um, the the enormity that people probably buy into this time of year um, and I'm you know I'm, I'm mindful that we need to celebrate um, the good things around us and, and family is the is the hugest thing and, and that's our line of work is keep it trying to keep our families safe. Um, my my message, I guess, would be to celebrate um, all these positive things, but celebrate within our means. Mm. You know, celebrate um, how how best we can celebrate as individuals and as individual families. Mm. It doesn't mean we have to buy into the big scope of what's going on if our means don't you know go that way. It's the important thing is being with those that are closest to us and, and family, and we have busy times with school finishing up really soon if not already and families now coming on holidays and going away for holidays so do all those wonderful things with each other but make sure we do it in a way that is going to keep us all safe 
And well, sadly, we live in a bit of an environment, don't we, where we're becoming unsafe is just so easy. And I'm particularly thinking right now of because we seem to be talking right now about financial pressure, I'm particularly thinking of those loan sharks out there. You know, you um, on social media and, mm. and whatnot, you constantly see these ads that need cash now. You know, things like that. People must just get themselves so inspired by being able to purchase something to do something nice for the family and then get themselves in ridiculous amounts of, of debt. I always think there's, you know, we're really lucky to live in Wairapa. We've got, we're a beautiful place place we've got Henley Lake we've got you know Mount Holds we've got all these beautiful places that we can get to within just a short drive that costs nothing and you know spending time with your family in that kind of environment with a picnic surely is going to mean so much more than a shiny toy that will be broken in in a couple of months so financially it just really bothers me that we have these these crazy ads and expectations and I, th- I think just, um, just on that, and as um, you're right, I think the, the culture of people living in the wider upper is we appreciate what we have at our back door as opposed to those um, things that we like to hold in our hands like the flash toys or whatnot. Um, so, you know, the coast is really close and we always hear about people going out to the coast to get away for the day or to the Henley Lakes. You know, you see the, the green zone at the park is always filled this time of year with people just going kicking a ball around. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what we're doing. But the culture seems to be here in town or in the Wairarapa that we utilise our our spaces around us mm-hmm. really well. Um, and that doesn't need to necessarily mean it only happens at a certain time of year. It could happen all year round. That's know? right, yeah. That's right. But I suppose it's, it's about recognising, parents particularly, recognising that that is special and, and imparting that to the kids on the day. You know, if Christmas Day is not going to be a time of lots of presents, gifts and fabulous food for your particular family, then taking them out to one of those green spaces and having fun and just, you know, reminding the kids or making it really clear about how that is so good for them and what they are getting out of it and what those positives are. I think um, parents need to remember that the most important thing to children is actually spending time with the parents, quality time. Mm. And it's not about those fancy gadgets, those are great, and of course your friend has lots and so you want lots. But actually kids really appreciate spending time with dad and mum in a quality space. Mm. And that's, you know, getting on some bicycles and riding to Henley Lake as a team, getting there, having a little picnic. That's amazing. Kids will remember that. Mm. They won't remember, you know, the fancy gadget they got that they'll probably break two days later uh, and that the parents have to pay off for six months. Yeah. Um, so I think just go back to basics. But another thing I'd like to stress is alcohol use. Um, you know, it's a festive time and, you know, stress around the house, you know, like the kids are all home and everybody's getting on everybody's nerves a little bit, is um, please, please consider how much alcohol you use because I would say that nearly 50% of the times police get called out at least um, to family home incidents is when somebody has had too much to drink and and that's always a worry for us especially amongst families. Mm, Absolutely it's certainly a worry for our acutes department too I know at ED we see a lot and you guys will certainly the police sometimes are asked to come and attend at ED to help Mm. us um, manage situations where we have people that have had far too much alcohol Um, they're drunk and disorderly and making a disturbance at our ED when they're there because they've either inflicted or or received you know harm caused harm to themselves or or whatever through their drinking and it it is something that um, you despair over alcohol is one of those things or alcohol related harm is one of those things that is just incredibly preventable Mm. isn't it it is it's like you know nobody has to drink Uh, I know there's addiction and all the support that's out there for that but it's your choice to sit there um, and and either get support to help you but if you're just drinking because you're there and there's booze and it's a hot day and and where that leads to is just it's really quite shocking at times isn't it it is and most people know their limits and most people know what will happen if they go over them so just have a bit of insight into your own behavior and say I'm gonna enjoy my day I'm gonna have four drinks Mm -hmm. and and don't go to the whole box of Cody's Mm -hmm. Um, there's no need for that Mm. So, yeah. So we, um, every year in December, I voice a radio ad that talks about host responsibility. And I think one of the key things around that is, as a host, making sure that we all have plenty of food and we offer non-alcoholic drinks as well. And um, it probably doesn't mean a lot to people when they're thinking about planning their party, they're thinking about the alcohol side. But there are a lot of people out there that don't want to drink 
copious amounts of alcohol and are very responsible they need to have the means to make those good choices so I think as a host if you're having people at your place particularly young people who perhaps haven't got uh, the ability yet or, or haven't got to that responsible level of knowing when they've had too much and it's a good time to stop yeah. now I think it um, comes down to the age old message of you know plan just yeah. make the plan before the actual event or the the occasion mm-hmm. and at the at the end of the day we need to just make sure that um, everybody's safe but when when we don't plan the ones that usually suffer are our young young ones what ha- what happens there who's looking after them where are they what are they doing what are they watching who you know it's, it's all that all those little things that come into it and it can be totally avoidable avoid totally avoided if we just make a, a simple plan yeah yeah absolutely. which is easy to say and then sometimes at the time we just don't manage manage or cope Mm. But it's not always the person who's hosting it, the person who's housed it. We all have a responsibility to make sure that we're all safe, don't Correct. we? I mean, when we're at a party and there's 30 odd people who are drinking out in the sun and not necessarily making good choices, all 30 people in that have environment a responsibility. Are, they have a, they, mm. they have a responsibility to make good decisions, but they also are quite capable of taking the lead and changing the behaviour and influencing what's going on. There's that, um, obviously the catchphrase, it's not okay when it comes to family harm, but it's it's bigger than that. You know, there's a responsibility for the community, for the whanau, for, the, for everybody, with the people around them. You know, if you step up and say, it's, you know, that's too much, you know, maybe you need to stop drinking, you know, and you say those things and the people around you support that, then possibly we won't have, you know, that one person or the two people end up, you know, in an aggressive fight, in mm-hmm. an AED uh, mm. and police aren't called so it's just about let's think about our choices mm. and as a community if we all step together and say it's not okay mm. then I think that has got to be a good thing and we do know in our community we have the benefit in the Wararapa of being a small provincial rural community where many of us know each other and we're all connected and we need to just use that to our advantage don't yeah, we and, and we do. instilling some of those good choices the responsibility yeah. setting the bar about how we want people to behave and and what actually is fun because when it goes beyond fun it's just I think it's dangerous it's no not fun, fun at all no, you know? no it's, it's not, not fun to the one person that's you know had a hit to the head or you know so it's also about if it gets to the point where things are getting out of hand call the police you know call someone because that's what we're here for and it's do you see so probably a silly question and I, I expect I know the answer but do you see an increased level of calls around this time of year because of that alcohol not initially so we don't see it going into Christmas because everybody's happy and you know you're doing all those preparation things and everybody's hasn't got on each other's nerves yet but after Christmas leading into the New Year's when we start to see the the rise because now suddenly we've we've used all our money on all those lovely things that we've spent our money on Uh, we've now got the kids home for three weeks and they really are driving us up the wall Um, and everybody's starting to combust a little bit and that's where potentially a little bit of alcohol or or drug use will come in and things will blow up so Mm -hmm. it's early January we see a, a, a bigger spike um, and then, then it's the realization of oh, we've got a big debt here, or things are going to be a bit tight for mm-hmm. the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So that's that's our biggest issue. We we do get the odd out of control uh, family or something over the Christmas period from a little bit of over excess, but it's not 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 over. You know, it's not massive. Are we with our uh, beautiful environment here in the Wairarapa? With the you know, we're, we're a great tourist destination place or people like to come here don't they to spend time in the water up but do we see a lot of um harm and escalation from people coming into the area not that i can not, so not that i can remember uh, no, i don't i don't think that's a, a big factor for mm-hmm. for policing no. uh in the water upper that's mm. a that's a, a tough one that we've really never had to monitor or deal with i guess so probably the only thing i could think of is uh, over new year it, it used to be quite uh used to always have those big New Year's parties out at, at Castle Point or Riversdale and those would always be a bit of an, an issue for police because mm. they would could get out of control. But I think over the last three years, 
um, the the liquor bans have worked really really well mm. and I know some of the residents don't like them and, and people you know they can't freely come and go from those areas after a certain time but it really is about allowing the residents in those areas to enjoy New Year safely without mm. massive and you know really huge parties the next door batch mm. that's been rented out for the night absolutely um, so well I know that my children are, are um, of the age where they're going out for New Year now and and things and um, they're all very aware of the liquor bans and the rules and you know the kids all talk about they do they do know it so it's certainly been cemented over the last few years at those beach destinations and the behavior you know the bar to how the behavior needs to be is is really well known which I a think lot of a lot of that um, Anna is driven by the actual community community itself as well you know mm. it's a it's a whole tolerance mm. of you know we didn't come we don't live here to put up with Absolutely. this kind of stuff and, and and in a way they kind of put pressure on the police to hey yep. you know we want your help let's can we please please work together yeah to keep this a safe place and i think that's what jill's alluded to is that over the last little while that we haven't had those mm. recurring big yeah it's really, it's really nice there. working out in Castle Point in, in those times now because you actually see the families having parties, you know, on their front lawns and they get together and, and groups of kids are wandering around safely, you know, in a really nice safe environment without that massive party yeah. happening. Absolutely. Um, so I really enjoy it. I think, and, it, and it's and, and it is a responsibility because the parents all know the limits and, and they, it actually works really, really well. So I'm really pleased that. You know, pressure was put on police to, to impose those sort of things and follow through with it because mm. it's worked. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Hey, so so talking about family harm, we were having a bit of a chat before uh, radio sh show started around um, what we're seeing in terms of people um, calling the police and asking for help and support around when you know when when there is violence in the home and, and things are happening. What would be our, you know to, to get out there to our audience? What is what is the message about how you contact people and what help is available for people if they're concerned about either themselves or perhaps their neighbour, someone next to them who is experiencing some sort of harm in the family? What what's what happens? What's the map? The map. the map. What's the map? What what's the pathway to to you can you can talk to people? any any of the agencies that mm -hmm. are working uh, in in the Warapa, and I think anybody from the, the pathways to the change abilities, um, the DHB, all of those places are available to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's that's offline from the police. So I don't think pl people need to worry too much about coming directly to police uh, if they don't want to. I, I know that's it's something that I would prefer they did come to police because mm -hmm. we work in the family safety team and our job is really to talk to people mm -hmm. to to help find ways to make sure that the family is safe and that isn't necessarily about locking people up it's about saying what is your issue let's let's get down to what's causing it and try and fix those base problems so that you don't have to come back to us or we can get you the help that you need and so that your family will be safe and and enjoy each other's companies and be you know what they should be and and enjoy their lives rather than the kids having to worry about mum and dad fighting all the time mm -hmm. and and the impact that it's having on our children because unfortunately the the impact on our children is huge and that's something that can't be taken away you know children that see parents fighting all the time and it's not just physical fighting i think that needs to be quite stressed as parents fighting verbally and, and demeaning each other is really horrible for children. Mm -hmm. it, it tries, it normalises the way the child feels about themselves and the way they see each of the parents and how they will end up Treating seeing themselves. Mm. Yeah, so it's well proven that young girls that see their dad beat their mum will end up being victims and, and the young boys think that's the way they should behave. Mm. So I think just saying to people, if something's not right, come and see us. Just mm. come to the front counter of the Marston Police Station, ask for the family safety team. We will come and see you. Uh, we don't have a marked car, we don't wear uniform. It is about just having that discussion and saying, how can we help you? Mm -hmm. um, and, and our officers quick to realise too that we may not hold all the answers, but mm -hmm. we do work with some wonderful agencies that we can navigate to refer to, mm -hmm. to, to put in place some good systems for them to get better. Mm. Yeah, because because people call the police uh, for a reason. Um, it's a call for help, and that help comes on a scale of whatever. Yeah. So um, we do what we can do at the time. 
but like um, like Jill said, we we like to get to the to the underlying factors of things. Yeah, because the the violence itself, the harm aspect to that's it. That's the snap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the so end result of what's happening prior to mm. that. Yeah. So it's good. So it's good to be able to get in with the Fano, the families, the find community. Out what the cause is. What's yeah. yeah? What what made us snap? Yeah. Is it things like um, the health of our children? Is it the food in the cupboard? Is it the lack of job? The lack of driver's license? The the um, you know all these other little factors that build up and build up and build up, and then we get that result. Mm. So mm. how how can we help, or who can we get to help mm. um, to you know to to empower us, you know, to enhance our mana that we can be better people and be better role models and examples mm. for our children. So, and I, I completely agree. What, part of this radio show and, and what started uh, Wrap Around Wadarapa was the recognition that we've got so many great support services out there in the Wadarapa. Mm -hmm. But even those of us in healthcare, even me working, you know, I'm immersed in healthcare all of the time. There are support services out there that are, that are directly involved in health that I don't even know exist or much about what they do. And you would see, you know, a lot of that and being able to connect people and put them in touch with those different services that can make such a big difference is, is pretty huge, isn't it? And the fact that it's community based, that they don't need to come into the hospital or go to an institutionalised type of corrective mm. environment. You know, these people can be helped in their situation, can be improved in really simple ways. So often, I would imagine, a lot of your solutions-based approaches to family harm calls that you get would be really simple and effective community stuff. Well, it is. It's yeah. um, police. We can't fix things. Mm. We, we are really the, the guys there to, to navigate yeah. the, the families to where they need to be. Uh, but we're the only ones that work 24-7, and mm. so we're always there, we're always available. Um, so it really is about just getting the discussion around the issues and then navigating them to those areas that they need to be. And it might be more than one area, or it might be one-stop shop somewhere. Mm. Mm. Um, I imagine that boiling it down in conversation to identify the actual crux of the problem could be quite an involved process and, a lot and of quite lengthy quite yeah. lengthy yeah i'm yeah. imagining you, you might patience. be working with some of these yeah. people for a long time yeah. and, and we and we have to recognize too that um the families that we are, are dealing with may not have uh good relationships or good experiences with the police mm. so we need to be able to break down barriers and those barriers come in the form of trust and just spending time you know little things just little phone calls or little text messages or door knocks mm -hmm. just to keep that relax and, and at the end of the day we care about our families mm -hmm. and we want the best for our families um, so we need to break down any perceived barriers and, and it could be a lengthy process you know we're talking months mm -hmm. it could be years mm -hmm. yeah. could be a generation you know until we actually get some some leeway and some change mm. but as long as we're making positive steps forward and we're not seeing the huge steps backwards then it's a it should be a plus for everybody and even if there is a huge step backwards it can be temporary can't it you that's know, right and it's, know, it's, it's, it's not the end of happen. end of everything you because know? for many of these people i would imagine it's it's historical it's generational Absolutely. harm that has gone from you know mum and dad before us and their parents before them and it's it's entrenched isn't it about this is the normal way of life for them yeah, and, and what and you're that's, doing that's what um yeah. our office sees is that yeah. we see a lot of our our people that they just think that's this it's is not normal. it's not they're not bad people Mm. And I'll put that out there. I, I don't think I've come across a person that I've dealt with that's that's a bad person. They've been led down a certain path of believing that behaviour is normalised. Mm. The, the key, I think, is, is understanding that it isn't and, and accepting some help. Mm. That's the hard part. The easy part is, is, is I suppose, having the family harm. That, that's the easy part. The, the hard part is addressing... The, the issues. And, so what and you're saying, Jill, is continuing business as usual and continuing to behave in a way that causes easy. harm is normal for them. That's easy. the easy approach. So it's actually recognising that it's time yeah. to make a and difference. And that's a brave thing to do, yeah. is to say, actually, I actually don't like what I'm doing mm. and I need to go and get help. That's mm. really brave. Mm. And, and it will take time because it's about changing behaviours. And, and that is not easy. Mm. Um, but also the the onus needs to be put on our families or our individuals too, that they need to sh show some resilience throughout all this because it is tough. 
yeah, and, and they may get knocked back by an agency or, the, or knocked back by the police in some formal way, well, they just need to just keep fighting forward, you know, just yep. keep pushing, keep pushing for what they know is the right way and don't get too overwhelmed with everything mm. and just trust and in the process. Must be hard. Yeah, yeah must, trust in the process and, and work through it, you know, and there's, 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 there are people out there that are really trying their best for them and it may not happen straight away that afternoon that morning but yeah. it, things are put in place to help mm. but we just need to realize that it's a process yeah and yeah. the families need to support them you know it might be the the son or the the husband that you know has been behaving badly for years don't don't ostracize them actually support them mm. be you know be positive and and helping them because that will help it so much more. And once again, that in itself must be difficult for the people that have been subject to their bad behaviour. Absolutely. Um, at the you know uh, wrong end of a of a punch, um, uh, you know, frequently or 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 worse or whatever that might be. To then turn around and and be supportive of that positive change must in itself be Absolutely. quite. Difficult. It is, and 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 the person, the, the victims of of the abuse, need to get as much help as the as the offender does because they've got years of trauma in a different way mm. on the other side. So it's all about everybody getting some help mm. to, to progress forward. And whether it's together or separate uh, is, is up to each individual family as to how they go. Um, and we have capacity in our, in our support services and the help that's available. In, it is stretched. In the I mean, we would always love more uh, capacity in, the, in our social agencies and things mm. like that because there is a huge need. Um, and if it, one thing I'd say is, you know, funding for, for NGOs in those spaces would be fantastic. But mm -hmm. um, I think our, we're actually well placed here with, with the ones we've got. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they're pretty upfront. If there is a, a waiting list, they'll let people know. And, and, we can, and, if, and we go back and forth with some of these agencies trying to find a place quicker mm -hmm. for certain people because some can't wait six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so then we have to just divert to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and what about um, what about volunteering? What about anybody listening to the show that would like to be involved and make a difference? Are there any of these support service networks sort of thing where people can actually get actively individually uh, involved in creating good? Well, the only one I can think of is, is um, obviously Lynn Tankersley does an mm. amazing job the of the Master in Food Bank mm. and she's mm. always looking for volunteers to mm. help out. They've obviously got the shelter that's, that's going to be up and running uh, mm. hopefully soon. So a lot of the places, unfortunately, are, are, you know, they've got a professional lens around yeah, them, absolutely. so volunteers mm -hmm. wouldn't be that easy. But um, I can't think offhand mm. of anybody else. Mm. I'm not sure, but you know, our, our families in our community need to know that when um, when times get a little bit tough, they can always just go into any, pretty much any of our agencies we work with, sit down, have a cup of tea. Yeah, absolutely. Don't have to talk about anything, disclose anything, can just have that time out. And I know there's a lot of our agencies that just open their doors and say. Come and sit down. Come and they really do. And some of those that spring to mind are changeability and yep. supporting families, which now yep. called the Yellow Brick Road. That's right. Um, you know, those, those places are fat pathways. Fabulous at mm. that. Yeah. Um, just offering just a little bit of solace and, and a safe place to be yep. to have that conversation. Yeah. Mm. So we're doing what we always do on the show. We're down to about the last minute, and I just wonder if um, Nathan or Jill, if you have some parting comments that you'd like people to know just prior to Christmas from the police family safety team. Uh, my only thing would be um, if things start getting tough, if you can walk away, walk away. Uh, if you can't and you need help, call for it. Mm. That would be mine. And if you don't know who else to call, call the call the police. Police, yep. Marston Police, family. Don't be frightened of the police. We we're actually not there to be a frightening. You're actually not that scary. Yeah. I have to say. Uh, for me, it would be um, probably a, a step before Jill's. The walking away would be um, the magic word for me. Would be recognise. Mm -hmm. um, recognise everything around you. Recognise the environment. Recognise um, your triggers. Mm -hmm. Recognise what may tick your partner off or your loved ones and just always keep those things in the back of your mind that hey you know things are getting a bit out of hand let's step back yeah, and let's mm. like Jill says let's and then, go for and a walk. Then walk away so for That's you right. it's around recognize your own reactions to the stresses around you and how you behave and know when you are starting to head in that direction and then yeah diffuse it we're all different even Do though something. we live in the same community we have different environments that yeah. we live in yeah 
Absolutely. Look, it's been a pleasure having you guys on the show. Thank you, Topper. Thank, thank you, Anna. Thanks, Jill. It's lovely, and I hope you have a great, because I know you're going to be working through it, but I do hope that you have a wonderful Christmas, and I look forward to having you back on the show again next year. Awesome. Merry Christmas to you, too. Merry Christmas.